the next module in this lecture is um, serves to give you an overview of the architecture of this toolbox. So I just dive right in. BCI Lab um, as a MATLAB toolbox is a, in a sense a multi-layer or multi-tier architecture. So there's some dependencies, dependent toolboxes that are externally maintained, not by us necessarily, but that are included with the download. That includes things like certain machine learning tools like support vector machines and so on, CVX. It includes EEG Lab as well, which is a dependency. Then on, on top of that, the blue stuff is what's really developed as part of BCI Lab, by the way. What's on top of that is some infrastructure that is available for people who create methods or just generally is being used in the implementations of the various methods. There's stuff to auto-generate graphical user interfaces, for example, to do cluster computation, uh, which is, of course, important if you want to run things at large scale. There's various ways to cache intermediate results so that they are immediately available next time when you need them. Um, perhaps even too much. <laughs> and uh, a bunch of helper functions and things like whatever, um, things that deal with the operating system environment. All of these things, by the way, occupy different individual directories, so they are nicely compartmentalized. So you can kind of think about them in isolation. On top of that is the part that's actually extensible. So this is where um, methods researchers actually add to the toolbox. That's the plugins, and this is also the place where all the actual methods are implemented. All the equations are essentially in this layer. And there are several kinds of plugins. Obviously, there's signal processing plugins or filters, uh, such as FIR filter or independent component analysis and so on. I'll show you what these look like, but basically it's just one file, one MATLAB function each. Then there's machine learning plugins. These are implementing essentially the whole machine learning framework and primarily supervised machine learning. So there's a, a whole bunch of methods in there, you know, linear discriminant and analysis, Gaussian mixture models, support vector machines, and so on. I show you a couple of pictures on those um, methods as well. Although obviously there's there's a lot of literature on these kinds of methods. Then the th and uh, these comes of, as pairs of MATLAB functions. I uh, show you some of that. The next one is um, somewhat coarser grained or larger scale. These are what we call BCI paradigms. Or you can view these things as a template for a particular BCI approach, uh, such as um, the windowed means approach that we discussed, where you extract these features and you have a classifier and maybe you have a bandpass filter at the beginning or so. This whole thing is actually one plugin in the toolbox, which says, I'm using this filter here, I'm using that classifier there, and I'm extracting my features in this way. And there's various other plugins, like what I showed in the methods teaser, which, which fall into this category. So there's things that are, in a sense, pre-assembled. You don't have to you know, collect all the different blocks every time, all you know, from scratch. And the last class of plugins is device plugins, which get the data into the software and out of it in, in real time. So that's things such as uh, lab streaming layer is, is one plugin here. On top of all that is what uh, I call the framework. So that's basically the main internal clockwork of the toolbox that um, the user interacts with, in a sense. The user <laughs> looks at it from the top, if you will. So there's mechanisms that allow, that allow you to define new computational approaches, like I want to use windowed means, and I want to use these and those parameters, and I want to use that classifier, and so on. This is um, where you define that. Then there is um, ways to e execute models online, basically run them online, and ways to evaluate how well they work offline, and obviously also some visualization. And th all that, all these features are accessible through scripts and through a GUI. And the two cover primarily, uh, in a sense, very much overlapping features. So you can do the same uh, with both interfaces. So there is two major um, frameworks in there uh, I I implemented in the toolbox. One is the online execution framework, which is basically um, exercising all the different modules for online processing. And what the online framework implements is this pathway that I've already explained in previous lectures. But to summarize this, you have multiple input data streams, raw data. You have a filter graph one or multiple filter chains, and each of these are plugins that pass data to the next stage and so on. 
that produces one or more filtered output streams. And at some point, you can invoke a prediction function on chunks or sliding windows into this output. And that's this part. And there you can decide whether you want to do separate feature expression, some kind of a statistical mapping, or whether you want to do it all in one step, or whatever. And the important thing is that if you implement a new brain computer interface design, you basically have to cram it into this framework. It is rather flexible, so you can do on-demand things here. You can just do nothing here if you want to. Or you can implement everything as filters and do nothing here. So it is rather flexible, but if you want to drastically deviate from that, you would have to rewrite parts of the toolbox. And that is um, not a great idea, because the toolbox is internally you know, complex. So if you want to change the framework, you're sort of in trouble. Uh, one can do it, but you need to read a lot of documentation, and you need to be a real serious MATLAB expert, because there's lots of magic in how you know, these errors are implemented, so to speak. Um, you're best off if you're writing filters and things that, like that that fit nicely into these slots and combine them and so on. So that's online. Offline, you, the offline pathway includes running this on pre-recorded data for sure, but more importantly, it includes the whole learning and calibration step. So the notion of the learning function, the kinds of data that you can pass into the learning function, like one or more data sets, and so on. That's the pathway that the offline framework implements, um, the you know, pathway of information, if you will, G grabbing all these sources of data, integrating information, calculating some parameters, and then plugging the parameters into this pipeline. And there's another area for the offline framework, and that's evaluation. So um, you want to not only run this stuff, you also want to quantify how well it works. And so the offline framework also implements things like cross-validation, train your model on some data, test it on some other data, shuffle, uh, and average the results, so to speak, performance results. It allows you to do parameter search in an automated manner. It allows you to do nested cross-validation and things like that. So that's all pre-implemented, and it usually doesn't require any coding. You just uh, click the button in the GUI or so, um, or the, the line in the script. And that's our little um, intro to the Truebox architecture and um, the end of this little module.